Okay, everybody, welcome to the latest episode of All Too Real 2. Yeah. My name is Michael E. Cullen II, and with me via Zoom, Zoom, Zoom is... Matthew Surf Ninja's house. Is that one word? Yeah, it's one word. Okay. Is that spelled... (coughs) Like it sounds. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Just checking. It's see, it's not surf ninjas. <laughs> it's surf ninjas. Surf ninjas. Uh, yeah. So. Is that um um Pat Usanian? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think yeah the fictional kingdom it doesn't exist in real life. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. If you guys haven't guessed yet by that or by the you know title on the episode description (laughs) today we are visiting another film from the 90s this one that we kind of remembered liking and aren't really sure how we feel now um it's uh 1993's surf ninjas which, uh, yeah, was uh, <laughs> directed by Neil Israel and written by Dan Gordon. <laughs> Neil Israel, who has actually directed <laughs> some, you know, decent television and TV over the years and uh also uh some not so decent (laughs) but uh he was also he was the writer of police academy real genius um bachelor party all great movies from the 80s yeah real genius (laughs) i love that movie me too He he also wrote look who's talking to Okay. <laughs> no comments. <laughs> exa- exa- exactly. <laughs> and he 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 wrote the uh, the Patty Duke show, still rocking in Brooklyn Heights, the 1999 <laughs> made for TV movie. I don't know why I just wanted to point that one out because <laughs> it, it jumped out to me. <clears throat> but as a uh, as a director. <clears throat> He's uh, directed uh, such uh, great films as National Lampoon's Thanksgiving Family Reunion, which I've never seen. Um, The Brady Bunch in the White House. (laughs) Um, Episodes of Love Boat, The Next Wave, Clueless, the TV series. Um... (laughs) <laughs> Lizzie McGuire, the TV series, um, Phil of the Future, Joan of Arcadia. Um, okay. Yeah, and uh, the Wonder Years, and um, he also directed the movie, the movie Bachelor Party, so mm. that he wrote. Um, Dan Gordon, who wrote the masterpiece that is. Uh, um, <clears throat> Surf Ninjas. <laughs> Surf Ninjas. <laughs> fun to say, Matt, isn't it? <laughs> say, it say it with me, Matt. Surf, Surf ninjas. ninjas. 
Yes. Okay. Yeah. Anyways, um, <laughs> he um, <clears throat> has written. He wrote the story for Rambo: Last Blood, which came out last year. And he wrote Surf Ninjas. Okay, anyways. Um, <laughs> but he, he also wrote Passenger 57. Okay. The year before Surf Ninjas came out. <laughs> and the year after it, he wrote Wyatt Earp. <laughs> he wrote the movie Murder in the First. The Assignment. <laughs> the Hurricane. Which is the movie about Hurricane Carter that starred Denzel Washington? Hey, man, he he really wanted to do this first, you know. So I, I'm just trying to <laughs> deal with this in my head that the same guy who wrote the Hurricane. Well, he had he had Surf Ninjas in his heart, and he just needed to get that out. He needed to write that on paper, you know, send it to the studios. You gotta make this movie. I'm gonna make all these other great movies in the future, but if I don't get Surf Ninjas out and it just sticks to my heart forever, nothing else is coming out. It just needs to get out. So, yes, <laughs> yes. Okay. Anyways, um, <laughs> Surf Ninjas uh, <clears throat> stars. Ernie Reyes Sr. as Zatch. Ernie Reyes Jr. as Johnny. Nicholas Cowan as Adam. John Carlin as Mac. Leslie Nielsen as Colonel Chi. <laughs> Kelly Hu as Rome. Um, mm -hmm. Tone Loke as Lieutenant Spence. <laughs> Nathan Jung Young as a uh, Manchu, and of course, <laughs> Rob Schneider as Iggy. <laughs> Everybody's this favorite comedian turned conservative, <laughs> Rob Schneider. Yep, best best acting role. I mean, like just the best. Like <clears throat> I can just imagine them like casting this film. And they had all these other people auditioning. You're like, you know what? We want that guy from SNL who's 30 years old at the time, and we want him to play a 16-year-old high school student. Let's do it. Something tells me that they wrote the movie first. <laughs> and uh, the studio was like, hey, we got to give Rob Schneider a movie. <laughs> right. Oh, God. <clears throat> That's my guess, because at that point, Rob Schneider was pretty hot. He was. He's pretty huge. I mean, yeah. he was on SNL for a while. He was um, <clears throat> he was in a couple of movies, I think, at that point. Um, and they're like, you know what? Let's just dye his, his hair red, make him wear you know, a T-shirt that's too large for him, and his friend's dad's boxer shorts to school? Okay, uh, let's run with it. Um, Did, didn't you do that when you were a kid? Oh, all the time. Yeah. 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 I also would break into my friend's house at like seven in the morning on a school day and just cook breakfast for myself using their food without, you know, asking permission first if it's okay if I just, you know, eat there. Did that all the time. So. Yes. <clears throat> yep. <clears throat> that's, that's the way of the Iggy. This is the way. Yep. This is the way of Iggy. <laughs> <laughs> the Iggy Lorian, okay. Yeah. Uh, the way of the Iggy. <laughs> Iggy nomics, if you will. Um, yeah. <laughs> That's how you save money. You just go to your friend's yes. dad's house and just steal his food and make <laughs> breakfast and wear his boxer shorts to school. Yes. So. It's, 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 it's a great lesson in Iggy nomics. Um, <laughs> a new word that is going to be in the Webster's Dictionary next year. <clears throat> yeah. Iggynomics. Um, yeah. So, uh, yeah, this was released in 
August 20th of 1993 by New Line Cinemas. New Line? Yeah. Missed that company. They're still <laughs> they're still around. They're just Oh, they are. Okay. Yeah, they're just owned by uh Warner Brothers. Oh, okay. Yeah. They're a subsidiary. Same company that did Mortal Kombat. Um Bunch of other movies, of course. <laughs> I can't think of them, but uh, New Line's most combat, uh, yeah. New Line's most famous uh, property was uh, was uh, the Freddy movies, the Nightmare on Elm Street films. Oh, okay. That's kind of what made the studio. Um, there's actually, if, if if you ever watch the uh, Never Sleep Again documentary about the about um, about the Nightmare on Elm Street movies, it's oh. uh, it gives you a great background of uh, New Line Cinemas in it as well. It's really cool <laughs> what John Shea and everybody did with that. Um, anyways, um, the uh, it was actually a really cool indie film company until they got bought out. But um, <laughs> <laughs> damn it, I do believe they were also responsible. <laughs> were, were they? And I don't know. I'm trying to remember. Were they responsible for the Ninja Turtles as well? Speaking of ninjas. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, New Line Cinema. Yeah, I think, I think so. I think um, they did release the Ninja Turtle movies. I'm not sure though. At least, at least part two. I don't know about part one, but mm-hmm. at least part two. So yes, because yeah. you know that's the thing. The, secret of the Ooze. Movie, yeah, Secret of the Ooze. Like speaking of like good memories, like <clears throat> I remember seeing this movie again, Surf Ninjas, and again, it's it's a matter of interpretation of how you want to pronounce it. You could call it. Surf ninjas, I call it surf ninjas. So that's just how I do it. But um, <laughs> I, I well, it's an academic discussion. Um, I ended up seeing this in the theater. My parents took me to see it when it came out. I remember being in like the summer, not like eight days before school was starting, but maybe that's just in my memory. I wanted it to believe it was like yeah. earlier summer because I always hated like the last few weeks of summer because I knew I had to go back to school. But like. So I remember seeing it like in June or July, but obviously that's not the case because the movie didn't come out in that time. So um, it must have been like right when it came out. And I just remember thinking that movie was so cool. Um, same thing with, you know, Ninja Turtles 2, although that I think that movie holds up a little bit better than this one does. But, um, you know, just that'll be the, that, the- that'll be the, the, the long debated, um, you know, topic of cinema <laughs> studies forever. What? Which like, mov- which movie holds up better, Secret of the Ooze or Surf Ninjas? <laughs> yes, yes, it, 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 it's a. Uh, in the box office proves it. I mean, you know, this this movie made a whopping four whopping four point three million dollars in the box office. So, you know, obviously money doesn't measure everything, but you know, movie that's released in the summer in the nineties, early nineties when karate movies and like those kind of movies were getting really popular since like the late 80s so you had about six years of like momentum of like making a movie like that and pretty much just like a cash crop and then it makes you know 4.3 million dollars in the box office so yeah um then again though 93 a lot of movies came out in the summer of 93 though that were really good so it had a lot to uh compete with so just for comparison, uh, uh, Secret of the U's made $78.6 million in the box. <laughs> yeah, so... <laughs> yeah, even the 1993 standards, $4.3 million, not a lot. So, um, yeah. You know, Rob Schneider probably got paid like 500000 right there for his... Or a million for his, you know, his um, nauseating comic relief role that was just way over the top, way too much. Um, like, you know, when you got to catch up bottle you don't have to you know empty the whole bottle on that sandwich you know just a few squirts is good or the french fries or whatever you use ketchup on i don't know that's your choice what you use ketchup on or if you use ketchup at all whatever whatever sauce you're using on your food um you know at a certain point you just gotta stop squeezing man and you just gotta stop squeezing that's a good catchphrase right now gotta stop squeezing um you know yes so yes (laughs) That is, that anyway. is words to live by, Matt. Words to live yeah. by. Um, so, um, yeah, we, we do have to point out that he was 30 years old. Yes. Playing a teenager 
whom I'm assuming was probably supposed to be about 16, because this was two weeks before Johnny's 16th birthday. Yeah. And they couldn't drive. That was a big thing. Yeah, so I'm assuming... Maybe he was a little older. Maybe he was like 16 or 17. Right. But still, he's 30. <laughs> and he looks 30. <laughs> he does. Uh, he looks 30. Th- th- this, um. th- this isn't a... Uh, a like um you know i don't know 90210 situation where some of the actors were younger but they looked older or like a da- Dawson's Creek Andy situation where uh <laughs> where uh <laughs> Meredith Monroe who played Andy was like in her i don't know mid 20s playing a teenager <clears throat> but yeah it's uh and and looked like a teenager so it was okay um or like I just recently binged the 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 new reboot of uh, Saved by the Bell, and <laughs> I was looking up the ages of some of the actors that are playing the teenagers, and uh, one of them is like twenty nine years old. Oh wow! But he doesn't look it. I think he's twenty nine, something like that. He's in his late tw- mid to late twenties or whatever. And then there's <laughs> other ones that are like twenty five and stuff like that. So yeah, but none of them look like they are that age yeah and <coughs> and mind you if you see <coughs> the great movie i directed called uh pi day die day pi day yeah most of our teenagers were in their 30s so um yeah. <laughs> i can't really say <laughs> complain about this um too much but we kind of did that on purpose that's why in our um in our thing, um, the writer Lindsay LaForest wrote the two lead female characters were both named Gabrielle, after Gabrielle Carteris, who was basically in her 30s playing a teenager on 90210. <laughs> so that's why we did that on purpose. So, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, anywho, back to this great cinematic <clears throat> um, achievement. The Citizen Kane of Surf Surf Ninja movies. (laughs) Surf Ninjas. Yes. Or Surf Ninjas, depending on how you pronounce it. I'm hearing it exactly the same every time you say it, so I don't know. (laughs) Well, it's it's the emphasis on the word, so Surf Ninjas, Surf Ninjas, you see? Ah, I get it. I'm saying it, uh, emphasizing on Surf. Whereas, in actuality, ninjas is probably the more correct thing because it's more about the fact that they're, quote, ninjas, which I don't understand how. For one thing, okay, well, 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 well we haven't even talked about the movie. Well, I'll get to that when we actually start talking about the movie. But, um, because there's, I, I have some complaints, um, <clears throat> about the title and, and, and what it implies and, and that it does not actually follow through. But that's okay. We, okay, so <laughs> so why don't we get started here, Matt? Um, let's start with a little bit about what happened in this film. Sure. <laughs> so, what uh, what did happen? <laughs> <laughs> uh, <clears throat> okay, I watched this movie like four times in the past week, and I'm still like confused, like just because <clears throat> it, it's an hour and twenty seven minutes long. And it feels like 10 movies are going on at once. And <clears throat> so I guess I just go like just bit by bit, I guess. So, you know, they're like Johnny's a typical teenager and his little brother, Adam, you know, is kind of like his best buddy or whatever, hangs out with them all the time. And they like to surf and stuff like that. And they're kind of like slackers when it comes to school. Their dad's always nagging them like to do their homework and, you know, telling them they need to find like a backup career if surfing doesn't work out. You know, you know that whole that whole thing. You know, and um, then it turns out that there's like all these ninjas that like are showing up and like trying to attack them. But then there's like this dude with an eye patch that's just like beating them up every time they try to get to their house, and they have no idea what's going on. They're just sitting there talking to their dad, and they go to school and everything like that. <laughs> And, um, of course, Rob Schneider, you know, his character Iggy is like their best friend for some reason. Um, 
I think they just keep him there for like comic relief because he's so fucking annoying as a person. But um, yeah, and they slack, you know, some more. Adam's supposed to like tell the teacher where Spain is, and he can't find it on the map because he's a fucking idiot. How do you not know where Spain is? Okay, um, and then Johnny was supposed to like introduce like some spiritual guru for some reason <clears throat> they never explained why like he's not like valedictorian or anything like that so i have no idea why he was given this huge responsibility knowing that he's a complete slacker and doesn't even do his homework but okay so that's plot convenience i guess this whole movie's full of plot convenience that they just slip in there with no fucking effort um maybe they chose him because he was asian i guess but <laughs> I'm just They're trying so to true. trying to guess They're that was so... probably the nineties I don't know. <laughs> no, that's extremely racist because I don't even think that guru was even part of the same country that he's from or whatever. So um like, oh well you're Asian, just go ahead and um invite this you know, do a Sarah okay, so whatever. He was supposed to do like a traditional type of like welcoming, you know, ceremony for you know, from this guy's culture. And instead, of course, he, you know, just riffs it and he does like a, a take on Barbara, Barbara Ann, but it's Baba Ram was his name. So like, ba, 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 Ram. Oh, gosh, I don't even want to think about it right now. It's still fucking stupid. <clears throat> but they do this stupid song and dance and everyone. And, he, and it looks like he's off bended. Like, wait a minute. I can't believe that you're, there. you know, whatever type of thing. And the ninjas come at some point and try to kill him at school, but the, the eye patch guy, um, I forgot his name, uh, Zatch. Not, sorry, Zatch. <clears throat> he beats up those ninjas. Like the ninjas are all over the place. They're like they're swarming all over Los Angeles at this point, <clears throat> just trying to follow Adam and Johnny everywhere they go. Zatch is just you know taking them out like flies, and eventually, um, <clears throat> you know. Iggy, okay, so Iggy is kind of like the Ron Weasley of comic relief, like before Harry Potter came out, which is interesting because he also has red hair. Probably a coincidence, but who knows? Um, <laughs> and, like, he's always eating all the time. Like that's just, like one of his gimmicks. Like, like, like the. Oh, also, okay, so this is a little. I'm like, kind of going off the rails here, but like my mind is like on a million things at once. But like, so. Another 90s trope that's in this movie, there's lots of 90s tropes, like, m like every 90s trope you could have is somehow, like, like snuck in this movie, like, like a turkey just stuffed in there into, like, its anal cavity, because it's so, whatever, okay, because the movie's shit. Anyway, um, <clears throat> I hope no one hears this from the movie and, like, takes offense, like, the actors or whatever, but, um... <clears throat> So, like, one of the 90s tropes in here, because you, you remember in the 90s, especially early 90s, like, there was almost every movie that was, like, kind of, like, geared towards kids or, or teenagers always seemed to have, like, the father that hated their children's friends for whatever reason. Like, I don't know, like, how that got started, but it seems like every single movie, you know, it was, like, almost, like, either, like, a comment on society at the time or almost, like, brainwashing dads to hate their children's friends for some reason. Because, like, this guy, like, hates Iggy. I mean, like, with a passion. Like, he hates him. Like, he's like, oh, he's still hungry, huh? And he, he takes all the food and just, like, throws it in the tray. Like, his own food that he himself is wasting. I know. It's, like, it's the, it's the, um, I don't know. I want to say, like, the, um... It's kind of like, okay, I've, I've watched some recent episodes of California, not recent episodes, but I recently watched some episodes of California Dreams. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the great 90s, uh, you know, <laughs> Peter Engel, uh, TNBC uh, um, show. <clears throat> and uh, the one character on there, um, oh, I can't remember his name, but anyways, he was the friend of the family and... and uh, the parents seem to like dislike him and uh that that happens all the time too it was like the you know it, it's it's kind of the, the the whole steve urkel t sort of thing yeah exactly like urkel mania um encino man that was a big one because he hated um 
Paulie Shore's character. Yeah. There was also a very similar character. He was always showing up for dinner. Well, a lot of it had to do with like just basically being like a freeloader, essentially. Like, yeah. like, don't your parents feed you? Don't your parents clothe you? And like, you never know like where these people's. They're actually kind of sad if you think about it because like like well okay yeah where is this guy's parents at like for real like are they even around like what's going on like with this person's home like like do they well well it's like it's like, like, it's it's like Kimmy Gibbler on uh, Full House or right. uh, yeah. or or um or Steve on Full House actually because he would come over and eat all their food right this is, a, this is totally a nineties trope it is <laughs> it is but it's also very sad because it's just like okay but like. What if like this this kid is like literally like has like deadbeat parents or something like that or just impoverished parents that can't provide you know for their children for whatever reason and then like instead though they're like making fun of the person like oh you're such a freeloader and it's like <laughs> they, just want, like, they just want like a meal like you know like like fuck you you know like you stupid poor piece of shit or whatever like anyway so. <clears throat> That was kind of off the rails, but that was a 90s trope. It's in the movie. The other 90s trope is the whole, like, like if you're a guy, like, you're not allowed to, like, show affection to another guy without saying, I'm not gay or whatever like that. Like, yeah. that was another big 90s trope. Also, like, a sort of maybe, like, casual transphobia slash homophobia. I say slash because it depends on the context of what they're getting at. Because he says, like, Adam at one point says that, he envisions Zatch in a, wearing a dress, and he's like, wait, what? You know, and he's like, psych! Uh, not yeah. 1993. Um, you know. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, what happens? <laughs> I totally forgot what happens. So well, they're at the burger stand. Okay, go ahead, yeah. I don't know, did you want to take a break really quick, and then we'll come back and finish the plot of this, sure. this amazing, amazing film here? Sure. Okay, we'll be right back, folks. I'm Tom. And I'm Brian. Hosts of Be Hero Fights. Home of the greatest debates of our time. We tackle the tough topics such as Fortnite vs. Call of Duty. McDonald's vs. Burger King. John Wick vs. Wait, is, is that really fair? Nevertheless, join us weekly on Spotify, Apple, Google, and pretty much anywhere you can find podcasts. And hear the madness ensue. And as always... Fight on. And we are back, 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 back. Okay. Oh God. Anyways, um, I am not on drugs, by the way. Um, okay, good. Yeah, I am. Well, they're they're okay. pres- prescribed by my doctor. Oh, so. <laughs> there you go. That, that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> so, uh, what else happens in this uh, wonderful film here? Um. <clears throat> so they're at the burger shop where um, their adoptive father works or owns. I don't know. And um, the ninjas. Well, first Zach shows up, and then the ninjas come in and they have like a huge fight in there and um uh they kidnap um mac their adoptive father and uh zatch you know takes them you know gets them out out of the way goes to the beach also for some reason adam um has what this happens a little bit later but adam has a game gear you know sega game gear yes and somehow the game like changes to like him and he's able to like predict like the future like a few seconds in advance or whatever mm-hmm. through the game, <laughs> which they they do explain that, which I'm actually glad they did because a lot of these movies they don't even explain why they just throw it in the movie and then they don't offer they actually do offer an explanation at some point, so that's good. Um, at least at least this writer of Surf Ninjas he, he had the foresight to you know actually explain certain things, not everything. But certain things, like, for example, he didn't explain why the fuck Rob Schneider had to be in this movie and just being a nauseating comic relief the entire movie. You know, oh my god. Anyway, Again, we um, might not want to blame him. It could be the studio. It's, it's true, but he wrote the script, though, so... Yeah, but he might not have um, written it for Rob Schneider. 
Yeah, that's true. Um, he, the person <laughs> could have delivered the lines somewhat differently. <laughs> so Zetch, you know, he, he just he keeps disappearing all the time because he's a ninja, I guess, and that's what ninjas do. And um, they end up going um, back home or to um, Iggy's house, I guess. I don't know. And um, no, not Iggy's house. They go to their <clears throat> house, and the the cop, like this lieutenant or whatever, he's like, you know trying to follow up on what happened and um iggy is disguising himself as like a distant uncle or relative who's scottish i guess and in a wheelchair for some reason i don't understand why that was <laughs> necessary. Um, i know uh because the because the cop didn't even see iggy to begin with so there was for one thing there was no reason to even have a disguise to begin with there was certainly no reason to add a wheelchair into the mix just for kicks or, or lack thereof, whatever. Um, because he had to make a point about his leg not working or whatever. This movie's just weird. And um But this was also really th- this was also after they met um was this after they met uh Rome? Uh <clears throat> no, I don't think so. Oh, okay. I think it was um I think it was before I don't know. I, I just watched it before we started recording. Yeah. This is how this is how this, there's certain movies that I can watch ten times and it's just I don't know. It just confuses me and I can't remember much. Um this is definitely one of those films and if you wanna call it that. And <laughs> and yeah, they, they they um they stay there for a little bit and then the game gear thing happens, I think, at that point, and then Zatch, you know, shows up to like prove how easy it was to like break into their house and it's like yeah okay because you're a ninja and these are like little kids who don't fucking know anything about fighting so like what do you expect them to have like fucking barracks like you know in their house like an hour after a dad just got kidnapped like what do you whatever okay and then he takes them to this um restaurant called like imperial palace or something like that that's supposed to be like the like um expatriate um community of um patusanian or patusan the patusan people which don't exist in real life and um and they have like this ceremony basically like crowning them as like the the two princes oh and also this is the part where we get to constantly here for the next 55 minutes of the film of Iggy claiming that he's royalty for some reason, and he never lets it go. And, and there's, <sighs> there's, an, there, there's an interesting situation in here too, where at one point the uh, the um, what's his name uh, Johnny tells uh, tells uh, Iggy that he can't be the leader <laughs> because he's not even Asian, right? Rob Schneider, however, is part Filipino. I'm just wanting to point that out, which is also the same nationality that the actor who plays Johnny, Ernie Reyes Jr., is. Well, maybe it was kind of funny. Maybe he he knew he was in real life, and it was like, you know, just like kind of like a funny... Like, oh, oh, you know, I doubt it. I I don't think the characters in this movie knew that the actor playing Iggy... Because he he um, doesn't really look Filipino because he's not fully Filipino. He's only part Well, especially with the freaking red hair and the stupid boxer shorts he's wearing. He just just looks like you're running the mill douchebag, but, Mm -hmm. um... (laughs) I'm sorry. Well, I'm pretty sure, you know, some Filipinos can be assholes, but, like, you know, I'm just saying he looks like you're you're just stupid, like, stereotype typical 1990s like LA type of like, a lot of movies uh, whatever yeah there are a lot of movies like this yeah. during that era or it's just and, like so and by the stupid. way I recently became friends with Ernie Reyes Jr. on Facebook and I just wanted to say hi in case he's listening to this yeah I'm and, not here for like bashing this movie so yeah, much and, and, and if he would like to be on the show and talk about this movie I would love that <clears throat> yeah I would I would absolutely or talk about Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles which he is also in the first one. So, um, yes. Yeah, so wait, 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 the first one or part yeah, two? He's in the first one, I believe. Oh, yes. Or what maybe character? he's part two. I can't remember. He's in. He's in one of them. I can't remember which one. I'm trying to remember. <clears throat> um, was he the one? I think it was part two where he was the, the delivering pizzas. Or was um, that someone else? Let me see here. He was. 
<clears throat> he was in um, one of them. I know that much. Um, <laughs> I haven't even seen him in a while. Oh, he was in part two. He was in part two okay. as, as Kino. Yes. Was, was he the guy that was delivering pizzas off the scooter and then... I think so. Um, I think so. It's been okay. it's been years since I've seen Teenage yeah, Mutant Ninja yeah. Turtles too. Um, yeah, he was in Secret of Views, so he was in the second okay. one. Okay, cool. Yeah, which we've already <clears throat> talked about. So, okay, cool. Yeah. Sweet, 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 sweet. And uh, oh god. So, can I talk about some other stuff that's going on in this movie before I forget? Sure, go ahead. Okay, so <clears throat> this is not really about the plot per se but it's just well okay it is but it's not let me explain so i don't understand how the main villain in this movie is like some random white guy who like i don't like how like i don't understand like how did this guy end up in this kingdom in the first place and how did he create a rival clan uh, to like try to take over this kingdom. Okay, that's point point number one. Also, Mac is some random American white dude that somehow worked for the kingdom at the palace. Like how? Like how does that? Ha- I mean, I'm not saying it's impossible, but it just it seems odd. Like, like <laughs> well, the, fir- the, f- the first one is because it was Leslie Nielsen. Okay, that's yeah. my only explanation. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> 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 but the Mac thing I don't understand, so like he literally he worked at the palace doing performing some kind of function, I don't know what, but pretty higher up in the I I would, I would imagine pretty higher up in the hierarchy because it goes from king to um Zatch, who it turns out is actually their uncle. And then right below him is Mac and the chain of command of who takes care of these kids. Like, what was he doing? <laughs> like, he was okay, uh, he, he was the master of economics. And, yes. Um, <laughs> yes. So, uh, so that was that's just, just the point I wanted to make about that. Uh, I always, I well, not always when I saw it as a kid, I didn't think anything of it, but now I'm watching it, and I'm like, okay, like just some random white dude from America. It just happens to be working at the palace of this Asian kingdom for some reason, and then he goes and opens up a burger stand in Los Angeles, like like okay. you do, like you do, like you do, like, you know. Uh, and the thing is, though, is that his personality is so like he doesn't act like some, you know what I mean? Like he doesn't act like someone who would work again because when you say work. When you're living in a kingdom and you you work in a palace, it's not like a job. Like you know, like I work at the palace. Like no, it's like something you do that's like a part of like your identity. Like it's you know what I mean. Like it's not like there's a whole like nobility aspect to it. Like it's not like oh, it's time to go to work at the palace today. Like you know what I mean. Like it's not. It's, so you, it, it's like being Jared Kushner. Yes, I'm just joking. <laughs> Yes, it's like, yes, it's like, it's just like Jared Kushner. Uh, that's not a good crossover now. Jared replaces Rob Schneider's character as Iggy yes. and call him Jerry. And uh, call it Jerry-nomics is his um, economic system. Yes. And, uh, and uh. he's always claiming whatever. Um <laughs> I hate Jared I'm getting, Kushner. I'm getting, I'm, Anyways, getting lost here. I'm getting lost here. <laughs> so, so basically, what we have happen mm-hmm. is eventually, um, Zatch takes the kids to uh, Patusan, mm-hmm. um, and uh, and and somehow the cop comes with them, <laughs> played by Tone Loke of, yep. of Funky Called Medina fame. <laughs> and um, and uh, playing a guard in a couple episodes of uh, of news radio, which I loved. <clears throat> Anyways, Tone Look is awesome. An Ace Ventura pet detective. Oh yeah, of course. Right. Yes. Of course. Uh, Star <clears throat> co starring uh, former uh, all too real two guest uh, Troy Evans. Anyways, um, so uh, 
the uh so there's a connection there between the movies <clears throat> and stuff that we've done before anyways um so basically they 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 go to the patusan and um they you know the <clears throat> lieutenant spence is with them as well like i said um the okay so they reach patusan and discover that uh colonel uh cheese or chives of cheese whatever it is uh cheese i think it is yeah mm-hmm. colonel cheese um r- uh, rule has uh, wrought um including a burned village and a um chain gang of political prisoners uh the guards uh spot them and they are forced to fight johnny and adam defeat them and free the villagers from their captivity um anyways uh they uh they go to this cave of some sort where there's a bunch of weapons from the monarchy okay. and uh zatch uh makes uh makes Johnny fight him to prove his abilities and shit like that and this this really <laughs> long like this really long scene that could have been a lot shorter and yeah. um so they're <laughs> They're okay, so <laughs> they are rallying the villagers and they travel to the coast opposite from the island that houses uh the um Colonel Cheese dungeon. Um <laughs> they can't go by boat because of an impassable reef. So uh Adam looks at these trees and he's just you know like, Hey, can they carve stuff out of wood? <laughs> or something like that and um so they 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 uh they make surfboards yep and uh they uh they paddle to the unguarded side of the island um so and during this point we do find out that Iggy's never surfed which was obvious right. to everyone but he was always trying to get out of it yeah yeah um they get on the island uh johnny and zatch uh attack uh the royal city taking chi and his henchmen down they free <laughs> mac who is there um during the battle uh zatch is revealed to be their uncle <laughs> um and zatch by the way is played by the father of ernie reyes jr so um yeah <clears throat> so um Anyways, they they defeat them um, with the help of Adam and his game gear. <laughs> um, so basically, then um, at, at some point during this whole situation, um, Rome, who is uh, bet- betrothed to Johnny, says that she doesn't want to get married. Because you know, basically saying that she doesn't want to be in an arranged marriage, but she yeah. but she still wants to date Johnny. I just wanted to point that out. So yeah, um, so who knows? They might get married. They might not. We'll have to find out in Surf Ninjas too. The the, sur- the surfing, and um, <laughs> thirty years later, yes. <laughs> <clears throat> They really should make that. That would be a great. They should. Oh my god! I would. Yeah. If they did like a GoFundMe page or whatever, yeah. I would definitely <laughs> contribute if I had something. Yeah. <laughs> and they and they need to bring and they need to bring in like sixty year old uh, Rob Schneider to play a thirty year old or something. Yes. And um. <laughs> or whatever. He just goes on anti vaccine rants throughout the whole movie. Yeah. What they what, like, what they should do is they should bring in Rob Schneider to play like his kid. <laughs> Yeah. Like 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 Iggy the second. And and he's a teenager. And um yes. and he's like in his sixties or whatever. Anyways, um <laughs> the, uh, the um so <laughs> so uh basically what, what happens is, you know, after they beat everybody 
Um, at some point, Adam, uh, just the important, the importance is Adam thinks that the game gear is what's giving him his abilities, but he finds out that he can actually foresee things and stuff and everything. I just wanted to point that out. Um, yeah, that's his power. Cause Johnny's supposed to be like the warrior, the warrior prince. Adam, he's the prince of visions or some bullshit. Yeah. Like a seer type of person. Like, mm-hmm. <clears throat> um, so, anyways, they're they're ended up seated and um, they, they they beat her, they beat Chi and everything and all of his people, and uh, Johnny is seated at the and Harold the warrior prince and uh, Rome is this princess and Adam as a prince. Uh, Johnny then declares the monarchy to be dissolved and announces that Patusan will operate as a democracy. The reason, yeah, what? <laughs> His reasons for doing this is for the people to finally be free of rule, good or evil. No oh, bullshit. Sorry, that's that's American propaganda right there. Okay, some monarchies are cool. Okay, not every country needs to be a democracy. Okay, sorry, end of rant. Um, you know, let it be a monarchy. It's fine. You know. <laughs> hey, we li- we lived under a quasi monarchy as it is for the past forty four years. I'm just getting used to it. So yes. Um. <laughs> <laughs> All hail King Trump. Anyways, um, yeah. <laughs> the um, and his tiny desk. Anyways, um, <laughs> and probably tiny penis. Anyways, um, whoa, <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, you know, shaped like a mushroom. Anyways, um, oh, oh boy. So, um. <laughs> <clears throat> that is the plot of this great film. Uh, do you want to take another break here, Matt, and then um, come back and uh, and we can talk about some trivia and reviews and other great things about this wonderful film? With pleasure. But I first want to mention <clears throat> about the whole ancient weaponry thing in the cave. Oh, okay. Go ahead. It's scene where, where Iggy is just going on and on. Like, it was supposed like they were trying to go for like this funny sarcasm thing just does not land well at all i tell you if you watch this movie you're you just want to strangle this guy maybe that was the point but it's overkill it really is because at one point zatch says you know oh this knife is like so sacred or whatever you know money can't buy it and he goes on for like five minutes like money can't buy knives i'm like oh my god it's just so and like i just wanted to kill that guy like i really did like i wanted to actually murder Rob Schneider f- physically for watch for, uh, while watching that. Okay, so and, now uh, we can go. And 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 by the way, if you do want to watch this, the whole movie is <clears throat> currently, yeah, as we record this in full on YouTube. <clears throat> a user's account, my yes, not not a <laughs> not officially on there. So yeah, and I, I looked elsewhere, and it's like really hard to find streaming anywhere. So. Um, <laughs> But you can buy that on DVD and stuff too. So oh wow, okay. Yeah, so all right, I'm gonna do that. Finally, yeah. We'll be uh, right back here after a word from our sponsors. Do you have dreams that you want to achieve, but are scared to do so due to self doubt, fear, and other people's criticism? I have just what you need. You need a dose of the Living the Dream with Curveball podcast, where I interview guests that will motivate and inspire you to stop at nothing to achieve your dreams. And always remember, if you believe, you can achieve. And we are back, folks. Back. Back, 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 back. Back. Okay. Here's some trivia about the film Surf Ninjas, which is the greatest thing that Rob Schneider produced besides El King. Anyways, um... <laughs> <clears throat> his daughter, who is very talented. Anyways, um... <laughs> <laughs> Have you heard her music before, Matt? <clears throat> no. Yeah, look, look her up. Rob Schneider's daughter, L. King. She is brilliant. Honestly, okay. she's really good. Anyways, um, there's a okay. There is a real Surf Ninjas game for the Sega Game Gear. 
<laughs> but it's completely different from what Adam was playing. <clears throat> However, the game Adam plays in the movie is also real. It was developed by Sega exclusively for the use in the movie. <laughs> That's right. Yep. Well, then they also make a, a Surf Ninjas for like the Amiga CD. They may, they <laughs> think, may have. I think the Angry Video Game Nerd did an episode on Amiga. And I think that was what, but the game again has nothing to do with the movie. And yeah. also, too, you can like knock people's heads off and slit their throats, which I don't remember that happening in the movie. So uh, that's in the deleted scenes. No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is the first film to feature both Ernie Reyes Sr. and Jr. Um, the uh, portable video game system Adam plays throughout the movie is the Sega Game Gear, a handheld version of the Sega Master System. It was Sega's answer to the Nintendo Game Boy, which came out a year li- earlier. Um, yeah, I do... Um, so basically, and, and here's another part of it. Sega Game Gear was a big part of the story because Sega financed part of the production. Mm. So that's why it was, you know, such a big plot point. Um, yeah. Ernie Reyes Jr. actually holds a fourth degree black belt in Taekwondo. Just awesome. You know, yeah. He currently, I mean, uh, from what I've seen on his uh, on his Facebook and stuff, he currently teaches uh, Taekwondo and other things. Um, so and other martial arts. So, uh, <clears throat> you know, if you're in the Los Angeles area. You know, go, go sign up and you can learn lessons totally. from Ernie Reyes Jr. I would if I could. I used to I used to take Taekwondo for like a year and a half when I was a kid, but I don't remember much, unfortunately. <clears throat> but I did like it a lot. I remember that much. Um, <clears throat> I went to one martial arts class and I learned how to flip people and that's all I ever did. Awesome. I, I, I was able to flip some guy like twice my size once. I did, that's freaking... I, I did it by accident too. Like I learned how to oh. do it, and um, and he he came up to me just as a joke, like pushing me, and we were just joking back and forth. And I grabbed his hand and I flipped him. <clears throat> it's muscle memory. It's awesome. Yeah, and 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 he fell to the ground and hurt himself. I felt really bad. <laughs> um, so <laughs> the um, okay, so uh, the uh, Patusan scenes were filmed in Thailand. Um, as we've said before, Rob Schneider played a teenager, although he was 30. Um, (laughs) shooting in uh, Thailand was very hot and humid. Shooting in Los Angeles was more problematic because the weather was cooler than expected. Uh, the, uh, moto surf scenes were shot in 60 degree (laughs) weather and many of the night scenes were colder than 50 degrees. After each shot, the actors would put on coats and stand by heaters. Wow. Um, as we've said before, Rob Schneider is part Filipino, the same ethnicity as Ernie Reyes Jr. and Sr. Um, Patusan is also the name of the country that Ernie Reyes Jr.'s character was from on the short-lived um, TV series Sidekicks in 1986. <laughs> um, both uh, Kelly Hu and uh, Ernie Reyes Jr. have appeared in Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles franchise. Who was uh, Kari in the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 1987 cartoon <laughs> series on Nickelodeon? Wait, yeah, that doesn't make sense. Okay, mm. anyways, and Reyes as Kino in Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Secret of the Ooze. Reyes was also a stunt double, uh, the stunt Donatello in Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles uh, 1. So he was hmm. he was in 1, too, as well, so there we go. Um, okay. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. The name Rome is only mentioned once throughout the film. Um, oh, the game uh, cartridge that got magically replaced for Adam's uh, Sega Game Gear was Shinobi. Um, Ernie, Ernie Reyes was offered the role of Donatello in Trinity Mutant Ninja Turtles 3, um, but he was already working on this film, so he couldn't do it. Um, mm. I dodged that bullet. <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> I don't know which would... Anyways, um, so... Uh, <laughs> uh, Johnny wears a San, San Jose Sharks hat throughout the movie. Ernie Reyes Jr. is a native of San Jose, California. Um, yeah. Um, both uh, Ernie Reyes's uh, Jr. and Sr. are Filipino descent um, and can be heard uh, saying a few phrases in uh, in a Tagalog, uh, Filipino's main mm-hmm. language, um, to uh, some of the villagers. Um 
since uh, Pakistan is a fictional Asian country, the language that is spoken is a mix of several different Asian languages, such as Vietnamese, Filipino, mm-hmm. and Thai, etc. Mm. Um, yep. So that is the trivia that we have there. Um, <laughs> here are some <laughs> user reviews from <laughs> called from uh, the uh, Internet Movie Database. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, ten out of ten. Okay. My That's favorite my favorite movie. Mm. Um this is from Liz Ard 83. Hmm. Um from June 30th of 2006. Everything about this movie is ridiculous. The plot is dumb, the characters are cheesy, as the jokes are lame. It is one of the most hysterical movies I have ever watched. I saw it first when I was about 10 because my little brother was on a ninja movie kick. I think I liked it better than he did. Of course, back then, I thought Johnny was cute. Um, I'm quite a lot older now, and this movie still makes me laugh as hard today as I did then. As pathetic as this movie is, it has to be my favorite. I think everyone on the planet should see this movie at least a dozen times. It's not a cinematic masterpiece, but it's worth every minute. (laughs) Okay. <laughs> That's a confusing um, review because it's like half insulting and then... <laughs> um. <clears throat> Here's another 10 out of 10. This is a must-have for any film collection. This is from Amethyst Flames um, from February 8th of 2009. Whenever I <laughs> see reviews of this movie, they usually include things like only boys under the age of nine would actually like it. When this film came out, I was a 10-year-old girl, and 15 years later, it's still my all-time favorite film. Mm. Rob, Schne- Rob Schneider is beyond hysterical as Iggy. The only truly disappointing performance is that of Leslie Nielsen, which is thankfully overshadowed by the entertainment value of his character. The characters are so likable that it's hard to choose a favorite. The plot is silly, yes, but it's fun and entertaining, and it doesn't try to be more than what it is, a comic (laughs) kids movie about ninjas. It doesn't bother trying to pull off angst like the original Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles or drama like Three Ninjas. It's just set, it just sets out to make you laugh and it succeeds. Young boys will (laughs) love it, but so will anyone interested in humor, lighthearted adventure, and fight scenes from before the days of slow motion and matrix disbelief. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> uh, sure. <laughs> okay, here's another 10 out of 10, Matt. You want to hear this one? <laughs> yep. Okay, this one <clears throat> is from CMEY Mail. Um,. And this is from April 10th of 2019. The headline is, I worked on this movie. (laughs) I worked on this movie. I worked on this movie. I produced the Sega Game Gear portions of the movie. I find the the comments interesting. Maybe I can clear a few things up. Three Ninjas came out just before Surf Ninjas. It was a very low-budget movie. I was surprised they got the talent they did. I really enjoyed working on this film. Uh, being a video game producer, uh, I was welcomed with open arms. It's funny that no one got that Ernie Reyes Jr. is one of the Ninja Turtles. He is an absolute martial arts master. Personally, I thought it could be better when it was done, but I watched a couple of months ago and really enjoyed it. It sometimes, uh, sometimes it is tough when you are so close to a project to enjoy it. I truly enjoy reading the comments, and so many of them got the movie. <laughs> what? <laughs> okay, so th- that was some reviews of the movie. This movie surprisingly has a lot of really high reviews. Mm-hmm. People love this movie for some reason. Well. 
Yeah, I mean, like, <laughs> the lowest I'm seeing is, like, a 4 out of 10. Well, here's a 1 out of 10. Um, <laughs> I'll read this one so we get a, another side of the coin. Um, this is from uh, this is from Byers um, <clears throat> in April 18th of 1999. This movie was made for MST3K. Surf Ninjas was made near the peak of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles craze, and it is obvious, obviously a blatant attempt to capitalize on the ninja mania. Um, they didn't do a very good job. This movie is such a great candidate for Mystery Science Theater 3000 that the producer should have skipped its distribution to theaters and sent it straight to the bots. Um, <clears throat> okay. Their story, by the way, this person spelled their wrong. They used the wrong there, and I hate that. Anyways, okay. I'm, <laughs> I, I'm, I, I, I'm what you call a surf Nazi. Oh, wait, no, I mean a spelling Nazi. Sorry, uh, a grammar <laughs> Nazi. Anyways, um, so, um, <laughs> the, um, <laughs> uh, their wow. story is that of a couple of kids, brothers, heirs to the throne of an island country that has been overthrown by a tyrant, are living in exile in the U.S., blah, 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 da, 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 da. they just explained the movie <clears throat> after that, but anyways, okay, so, <laughs> I yeah. thought, yeah, um, basically they say, and it says, it's an, and it's a commercial tie-in for Sega Game Gear, and you've got yourself one giant waste of money, is what they're saying it is. Okay, <laughs> so... <clears throat> Um, I want to point out something. There was a uh, cr the critical response to this movie. Um, the Baltimore Sun thought the film's lead, Ernie Reyes Jr., was too old at 20 and muscular to be believed as a 15-year-old. <laughs> they said nothing about Rob Schneider playing a teenager, but they thought that <laughs> right. Ernie Reyes... <laughs> Junior at twenty years old was too wow. old. <laughs> Even though his best friend was ten years older than him, <laughs> and supposed to be in the same high school. Um, wow. So yeah, I just wanted to point that out. Um. Yeah. <clears throat> Anything else here, Matt? Would you recommend this movie to anyone? Uh. Yeah, kind of. I mean, I don't know. Um, <clears throat> just for maybe, you know, like, nostalgia sake, because, <clears throat> like, I do remember seeing this in the theater and coming out of the theater, loving it and thinking it was great. So, like, maybe just, like, holding on to, like, that kind of, like, fleeting <clears throat> memory type of thing. But, like, yeah. Don't don't expect to like like it really unless unless you just have a terrible personality and you like that for some reason. Um, I mean, like if you want to make fun of it with friends or do like your own podcast or <laughs> YouTube video, <laughs> whatever, to talk about it, that's fine. But like, I don't really think you're gonna like genuinely enjoy this movie and be like, yeah, you know. I can't get enough of Rob Schneider's antics and just nauseating comic relief character that he's just like pushing and pushing the envelope to the point where it's just going to completely break in half. Um, so, yeah, I guess I would <laughs> recommend yeah. it. Me too. I, I think it's a good, it's a good, uh, bad mm -hmm. movie. It's a good, bad movie. Yeah. Um, again, no offense to the actors and people who make it. I, I, mean, I know I mean, like, it, it's it, it's a product of its time. I think yeah. at the time it was probably good. You know what I mean? It's not like I mean we're we're looking at it, you know, almost thirty years later, and it's like <clears throat> kind of <throat> well, you know, yeah. I noticed something too about the movie. A lot of those catchphrases are, have come back now in style. Like, um, bra, like yeah. that's now, well, and also aggro. Like, I thought those were like new sayings that like Gen Z came up with. I've totally forgot about like all that stuff. Like, because you know, they say like usually 25 to 30 years when things start to come back in style again. So, you know, 
who knows? We might get a series in just two in like a couple of years from now. <laughs> well, with, with with all of the reboots and nostalgia of the world, it wouldn't surprise me. I mean, we could get right. like a we could get a surf a re- ninja, surf ninjas TV series for all we know. You know what I mean? Right, I mean, a a net, Netflix or something, or <laughs> right. HBO Max or something. You know, um. <clears throat> so who knows? I'm all for it if they do want to do it. Mm-hmm. You know, hell, I'll direct it if they want right. to. Um. <clears throat> the uh yeah so um on another note here uh some sad news happened recently that yeah. uh i just wanted to <clears throat> talk about um our good friend jamal wallace knight who has been on this show several times um sadly passed away recently <clears throat> and uh i just wanted to you know we're gonna try to figure out a way to attach a charity or something to our <clears throat> episodes by the time this airs hopefully yeah um to help people <clears throat> out that are dealing with similar issues to what jamal was dealing with health wise <clears throat> um he was probably one of my best friends and it's really sad that he's not going <clears throat> to be around anymore um yeah. <clears throat> been trying to deal with it all week um yeah um so yeah i'm still i'm still in like the shock me too like like, i keep thinking like he's just gonna like pop up and like oh hopefully it was a prank or what like just Mm -hmm. it's it's weird um i almost feel kind of bad because i haven't really like had like much emotion it's just kind of like almost like just like deadpan yeah i know what you Uh, mean but that's awful too because again i'm not at all comparing like different species to a human but like my my dog passed away like two weeks ago so i was dealing with that and, you know and then it was like 10 days after that you know like um <clears throat> yeah that's so it's a lot of stuff yeah <clears throat> yeah it's been a tough year um for a lot of reasons and uh <clears throat> yeah and if you go back and listen to the couple episodes uh, of like three three or four episodes that jamal was part of um he's one of the funniest people I ever knew. Um, yeah. <laughs> kindest would do anything for anybody. Um, it's just <clears throat> sad when people like that <clears throat> leave the world. Um, and it's hard to, re- I mean, they're, they're irreplaceable. So it's, it's hard to deal with that. Um, you know, I knew Jamal for, I don't know, seven to 10 years or something like that. And, Got to be really, <clears throat> got to be really close to him working on films and uh, just hanging out with him and other things too. And we were in the process of producing three or four movies, so right. Hopefully, we can get and, those <clears throat> produced in his honor. Right, and the thing is too is like, <clears throat> even though he was like super talented and stuff, you know that stuff is is nice and it's you know good secondary qualities, but you know the you know, the main things is like how good of a person he was. I mean, cause yeah. he didn't talk about it a lot, but he, he, you know, he had a lot of like issues in his life, like whether it came to like his own personal history, um, health. I mean, there was a lot of, a lot of stuff to deal with and, and he was really, really kind and nice. And yes, he was super talented and that's, that's, you know, that's nice to talk about, but yeah. that's, even if he wasn't, that's, that wouldn't matter. Um, <clears throat> you know, but the fact is, is that he was, he was writing, he was writing a book <clears throat> about his life. He was working on several films. He had a gaming channel. He was teaching himself how to play the piano. He was going to law school. And, you know, one of the sad things about it is I think that he always felt like he wasn't doing enough, which he certainly oh, was. Know. And he was doing more, way more than most people his age were or any age uh, for that matter. Um, But so, yeah. um, Yeah. He's only 36 years old, which is really sad. And uh, I mean, it's sad when anybody dies period, but that's way way too young. He had so much more to give the world. um, Both, both talent wise, like you said, and just, you know, personal wise too. Cause I mean, he would walk into a room and you knew that Jamal was there. It wasn't like uh, he, he, you know, he, (laughs) He stood out, and uh, yeah. and yeah, I mean, I the, the other day there's a he he was the the master. I mean, this, this is more about his talent, but still, he just made me think about his humor. He was the master of the re- of the reaction 
And yeah. um, there was a scene in the movie Pi Day Die Day, which I directed, um, where <clears throat> this girl's going on about crazy shit that happened at her old school. And Jamal just <clears throat> gives this response where he's about to say something and then <clears throat> doesn't say it because he just realizes it's not going to matter. And it's just the response and <laughs> his the response in his face. And that was all Jamal. I don't I don't. I don't believe that was in the script or that I directed him to do that. I think that was all Jamal. So <laughs> it's just great when you see, see things like that. Um, so yeah, right. I thought about that the other day and it actually made me cry for about a half hour when I was thinking about just oh, that, just that one I reaction. Know. So, um, I was but, thinking about that same scene, I think when, yeah. in the golf cart. Um, no, no, that, that was a different thing. Yeah. But the, oh, okay. this, this was in, um, this was in a shop room in that movie, but yeah, no, but he, there is a, there is a scene in a golf cart where he does have a rap, um, which is hilarious, but yeah, he and, he and, uh, uh, this actor Jack, who was in the movie, they, they have this, uh, they have this great, uh, rap scene together in that movie that's at the end of the credits and it's just great, but, uh, kind of helps show Jamal's personality to people that will right. ever get to know him. But if you if you listen to the episodes that we had of this with him in it, um, and I'm not trying to get people to listen to that just to get us listens or anything. I just want right, right. No, I, I just want people to know who Jamal was, and I know. Uh, you know, and, and look up his uh, his gaming after dark and uh, any of the like Twitch streams he had and all these different things too. You can get to know his personality through those. Um, right. He's a great guy who will really be missed. I don't know what else yeah. to say, really. Um, it's it's just sad. <clears throat> it, it's it's um, <clears throat> I I know, like I, yeah, I don't know, like I <clears throat> yeah, <laughs> sorry. Yeah, uh, it's hard. Yeah, like usually when I go to bed, that's when I start thinking about him more because I'm trying to sleep and stuff. And yeah, <clears throat> usually I could kind of distract myself throughout the day, you know, doing other stuff or whatever. But then. <clears throat> It's uh yeah. It's hard. <clears throat> but anyways, uh, you know, hope you're in heaven making God laugh and right. whatever else, Jamal. Uh, we'll miss you a lot. Um, I'm gonna dedicate this episode and every future episode to Jamal. Right. Um, yep. <clears throat> so, God bless. And uh, anything else, Matt? Uh, no, that's about it. All right. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening to All Too Real 2 Podcast, a Cullen Park production. Produced and edited by Michael E. Cullen II. Music by Matthew Haas. Subscribe and share the show. Visit us at cullenpark.com.